Chief Election Commissioner asked the Electoral Inquiry Committee to perform duties properly guided by rules. Candidates file appeals with EC against cancellation of nomination papers. Number of appeals totaled 543 on the final day. Oitka Front has nothing in store except allegations and complaints, comments of Idol Khabib. Former security advisor Michael Flynn gives important information on connection between U.S. President Trump's election campaign committee and Russian officials. And Bangladesh powered by Test Series win will meet Windy's Sunday in first match of OD Series, practice match tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the news at 10 p.m. This is Asif Rahman with the news in BTV, BTV World and BTV Chattogram Center. And I'm Mashru Palsain. You've just heard the headlines. Moving on to the details. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina inspected newly procured second Boeing 7878 Dreamliner, the most state-of-the-art aircraft named Hongshubolaka at Hazrat Shah Jalal International Airport today. The Prime Minister boarded the new aircraft and went around different zones, including its cockpit. On the occasion, a special munajat was offered seeking blessings of Almighty Allah as well as for continued peace, prosperity and progress of the country. The 271 seat capacity Dreamliner arrived in Dhaka on Saturday last from Penfield Airport in Seattle, Boeing headquarters in the USA. The Prime Minister herself chose the name Hong Shubolaka for the most modern version of the Boeing added to the Biman. Dreamliner Hong Shubolaka will formally start flying on different routes from Dhaka from 10th of December next. On the first day, the new aircraft will fly on Dhaka London route carrying passengers from Dhaka. Dreamliner will also fly on Dhaka London route, Dhaka Dammam and on Dhaka Bangkok route. It may be mentioned that Biman Bangladesh Airlines got the first of their Dreamliner on August 19 last and the Boeing will hand over two more Dreamliners to Biman in September next as per the agreement signed between the two sides. Chief Election Commissioner Mohammad Nurul Huda has issued directives to the members of the Electoral Inquiry Committee comprised of district and session judges to perform duties lawfully for holding free fair and impartial election. He issued the directives while briefing members of the Electoral Inquiry Committee at the Nirvachan Bhavan today. EC Secretary Halaluddin Ahmed chaired the, chaired the occasion while Election Commissioners Mahbub Taluddar, Mohammad Rafiqul Islam, Begum Kobita Khanum and Brigadier General Retired Shahda Hussain Chaudhuri spoke. The Chief Election Commissioner asked the Electoral Inquiry Committee members to work more visibly. A total of 543 appeals were submitted to the Election Commission challenging the rejection and acceptance of nomination papers for the next national election. 222 appeals were submitted today, the last day for submitting the appeals. Election Commission Secretary Mohammad Halaluddin Ahmed said this while briefing the reporters at Nirbhajan Bhavan Media Center this evening. He said the Election Commission will start hearing and instant disposal of the appeals from the morning tomorrow, adding that all appeals will be settled by December 8. Election Commissioner Mahbub Talukdar visited the appeal receiving process in the afternoon. Italian Ambassador to Bangladesh, Mario Palma, made a farewell call on Speaker Dr. Shirin Sharman Chaudhary at a Parliament building office today. During the meeting, they discussed Bangladesh's socio-economic development, investment and economic and political empowerment. Citing 
Bangladesh making forward stride under the able leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Speaker Dr. Shirin Sharmin Chaudhry said the present government has created 100 special economic zones across the country to attract foreign investments. She urged Italy to invest more in those special economic zones, citing Bangladesh's rich historical and cultural heritage. The outgoing Italian ambassador profusely praised country's overall development. Awami League General Secretary Obadul Kader has said the upcoming election will be held timely even if BNP boycotts the polls. He told the journalists at the Awami League's President's political office at Dhanmundi in the capital today. The minister said this at the Awami League President's political office. The minister said that the parliamentary polls slated for December 30th will be held in the stipulated time frame. Replying to a question, Obadul Kader said, all rebel candidates will be expelled from the party at the end of the nomination paper withdrawal date on December 9. He said that people of the country will make the vote revolution on December 30. Health and Family Welfare Minister Mohammad Nasim has said the health sector of the country saw unprecedented success in the last 10 years. All the credit goes to Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. The minister said this while unveiling cover of a book titled Shafulle Juare Bangladesh Shastho Bisher Bishomoy and addressing a press briefing on the success of the ministry over the last 10 years at the Secretariat today. Health Services Secretary of the Ministry, Asadul Islam, Medical Education and Family Welfare Division Secretary, G.M. Saleuddin, Director General of Directorate of Health Services, Professor Dr. Abul Kalam Azad, and DG of Directorate of Family Planning, Dr. Kazi Mustafa Sarwar, was present on the occasion, amongst others. The Health Minister said the country has achieved progress more than its expectation, including reduction of maternal child deaths and life expectancy. He also mentioned that Bangladesh has won a total of 16 international prizes in the health sector. Now BTV's regular field re reports on people's voices on politics and election. Discussions, table talks and conversations are going on at every corner of the country as national elections is approaching nearer. Mass people are discussing about the government's performance, development of localities and dreams and possibilities of future Bangladesh. Talking to BTV, some enclaves, residents and people of adjacent areas of Ponchagor district express their thoughts over the next general elections. An elderly person said they have suffered almost 68 years. This government implemented land boundary agreement with India in 2015, which ended their miseries. Enclaves exchange between India and Bangladesh is a historical and life-saving event for them. He further said, since then, many infrastructural development has begun in enclave areas as roads, culverts, bridges, schools, mosques have been built. They want such government in power, he added. A woman said present government has opened community clinic in their locality, which is very much helpful for them. They are getting medical facilities and 31 types of medicines free of cost. Also, pregnant women are receiving maternity services easily. They want continuation of this government, she added. An elderly woman said in the past there was no clinic in their locality. They had to go far away to get medical treatment. But now a clinic has been built and they are getting med medical facilities at their doorstep. They are happy with the service provided by this government. Now the international news. U.S. Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller recommended that President Donald Trump's former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn fail no, face no jail time due to his substantial cooperation with the investigation. In an amendment to the sentencing memo, Robert Mueller details the help Flynn provided to his investigation in exchange for a lenient sentence. Flynn is due to be sentenced in the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia on 18 December. Michael Flynn's was the first guilty plea secured by the Mueller investigation into alleged collusion between Trump's election campaign and Russia. Flynn lied to investigators about conversations with Russia's ambassador to the US, Sergei Kislev, 
in which Flynn appeared to be trying to undermine the policy of then President Barack Obama. Flynn also lied about the fact that before and after the election he had a $500,000 lobbying contract on behalf of Turkey that he had not reported. U.S. Senators said they are more certain than ever after a private CIA briefing that the Saudi Crown Prince had a role in the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. In a in blistering attack, Senator Under C. Graham said he had high confidence Mohammed bin Salman was complicit in the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. The South Carolina Republican described the Saudi royal as a wrecking crazy and dangerous. The Saudis denied the Crown Prince was involved in Jamal Khashoggi's murder. Now news India's, India's most powerful satellite called the Big Bird was successfully launched into the space today from the French space port of Cairo in South America. The satellite is the heaviest Indian-made equipment that the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, put into its orbit. The satellite will help provide satellite-based internet to remote places where cable-based internet cannot reach. India has now 104 satellites according to Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, Big Bird Satellite is more powerful than of total powers of other 104 satellites of India. Now news on sports. BCB 11 will face Windies 11 in the only ODI warm-up match at Fotulla tomorrow. The match will start at 9 o'clock in the morning at the Khan Shahib Osman Ali Stadium. The first and second ODI match of the three-match series between Bangladesh and Windies will be held at Mirpur Sheri Bangla National Stadium on 9th and 11th of December respectively. The last one there will be held on 14th of December in Select. In Abu Dhabi Test, New Zealand scored 26 runs for two in their second innings against Pakistan at Stumps of Day 3. Kane Williamson with 14 and William Somerville with one run are on the crease. Earlier, Pakistan started today's batting with an overnight score of 139 runs for three in their first innings. They were all out on 348 runs. Azhar Ali scored 134 runs while Asad Shafiq scored 104 for Pakistan. New Zealand scored 274 runs in their first innings. The three matches test series are levelling one by one by 1-1. One, one. And now to end the bulletin, a repeat of the top stories. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina inspects newly inducted Biman Dreamliner, Hong Shabolaka. Chief Election Commissioner asks Electoral Inquiry Committee to perform duties properly, guided by rules. Candidates appeal with EC against cancellation of nomination papers. Number of appeals today, total 543 on final day. Oiko Front has nothing in store except allegations and complaints, comments Obaidul Kader. Former security advisor Michael Finn gives important information on U.S. election manipulation and Russian connections. And Bangladesh, powered by Test Series win, will meet Windy's Sunday in first match ODI practice, ODI practice match tomorrow. And that is the end of the bulletin. Our next bulletin will be in Bangla. 